the art can can't tell us that we're alive or we're dead. It's the reality in the end that's what we are actually developing. The virtual is working for the real. Hi, I'm Karen Wong. I'm the industrial designer here at HatchDuel. Hi, I'm John Tai. I am the principal and co-founder here at HatchDuel. Today we're going to talk about and share with you our thoughts around VR and AR as a whole experience and look through the window of how the future will be. It has to deal with uh, personalization, taking a look at artifacts where you can get different shoes and collect different rooms even. You can buy pods with like cryptocurrency. Having all that in place, I don't know what hardware is going to do for that or like what kind of hardware correlation will be, but I think the digital opportunities are pretty infinite. If you wanted a dragon in, in the other world, you can have a dragon. Uh, will there be a, a hardware buck? For that so you can like write it in the future who knows there are a lot of opportunities uh, for hardware the digital side will be the leading indicator and then you know hardware will probably follow along to facilitate that immersion a lot of the things you you look at your phone for to control your smart home you might be able to do through smart displays or inter augmented you know contacts and things like that now so voice control things or you know things that you would sense normally you can probably control it all and see it all happening in real time um, you can probably drive up to your your house and see if the doors are unlocked or if the lights are on even before the lights are on just through augmented reality. You could teach your sibling in college who doesn't know how to cook how to cook through your kitchen by you know walking them through it and having them be like right there to look over your shoulder. Watch your pet, mm -hmm. you know. You know Tesla has the the whole pet mode for your car so they don't burn up in the car. Maybe something like that eventually exists where you don't need to board your dog anymore because you can, you know, through VR and AR, like watch your dog while you're in Fiji. Inviting friends to your home doesn't have to be physical, right? Having them sit next to you on the sofa in your living room can be something that just through a click mm -hmm. or real quick um, communication, just bring them in. The technology hasn't caught up to where it feels genuine yet you know but i think once it gets there yeah like you know we work in a pretty remote hybrid setting and i think like once the technology gets there we could feel like we're reviewing you know designs right then and there with with the person we kind of do it now uh, we can but i think the better it gets the more immersive it's going to feel yeah. so the whole argument of like oh you need to be in the office to look over the shoulder and you know work with someone i do think like Eventually, when you don't have to wear a heavy headset and you don't have to put on all this gear to do that, then yeah, like it'll be it'll be pretty seamless, like the hologram version. Right? We're always going to just try to experiment with AR and VR in terms of the working interaction amongst ourselves, and just to see. And, you know, we're always A/B testing things and seeing what works or what doesn't or what enhances our workflow together. Reviewing models with clients, even in VR, if we need to, like large scale. So for instance, we're working on semi-large scale uh, product right now, and the environment that it's supposed to be in is very large scale, so how would we evaluate that just on screen with a PDF, right? Sending a, you know, having the client put on a headset even though they are not necessarily um, here in Sunnyvale, maybe they're in San Francisco, and we don't want them to go through that painful commute over the bridge, and uh, you would say, hey, like at 10 o'clock, put on your headset, we'll meet you here, and then let's look at the design together mm -hmm. in real time. We can see it in real time, real size too. So I think those kinds of things you might see us be doing. In terms of AR, when it gets to that point, I would love to be able to analyze models and prototypes and just be able to like say, I don't like how this corner looks and just have it documented and then go to a you know PowerPoint so that I can send back to China. With the you know new programs like gravity sketching and all that, um, it's definitely a huge opportunity there to do 3D design around the VR or AR uh, tools that's you know additional to what we've been using for typical ID tools. It will just be really good add-ons to it and let us to really be able to especially see the scale of the product that we're yeah. designing, right? Because that's something that even though we have all the tools, we're not able to actually see it in 3D. Uh, it can cause problems and can be solved through being able to use VR, VR or AR to do 3D sketching mm -hmm. or actually like holding products that we're designing in hand. Yeah, and I think it allows us to, if we're short on time, 
to not wait for a 3D print. So let's just say we're printing some kind of hand ergonomic product and mm -hmm. we can evaluate it in VR space. Ultimately, if you're creating real products, you still need to test in reality. So even though 3D printing kind of removed foam modeling and that stuff, you're still physically touching the prototypes and, and validating. Mm -hmm. So you're never gonna get rid of that if you are creating things for humans or dogs or cats, right? Like you can, you need to physically test these things. And so you can only stay digital for so long and then eventually it has to get into the real world to yeah. test. Totally agree. I think no matter what VR and AR is developing in the virtual world, it's everything when it comes back to the reality, it's still about human and everything around human life, right? Um, it's still very much the real physical tactile that we are actually facing. Um, it's what that that tells us if we're alive or we're dead, right? The art can't, can't tell us that we're alive or we're dead, but it's the reality in the end that's what we are actually developing. The virtual is working for the real. Yeah, definitely we cannot live without seeing the products in hand. We cannot live if the 3D things are only appear in the virtual world. Like you will do some gesture or something and then you know it will make it for you. I think there are infinite possibilities for shortcuts, right? To, to work for the workflow that we have right now. We still have the problem of like comfort fatigue where if you're gaming for a long time and you have to wear, you know, a headset on your face for several hours, it can get uncomfortable. Comfort and ergonomics should be always something to be refined year over year. Removing as much hardware as possible, but mm -hmm. still maximizing the immersiveness, that's the tricky part. Like, how much stuff do you have to put on yourself to feel or experience all these things and how do you remove all that? Yeah. It's basically make the uh, body wear less and less heavy. Invisible. And invisible, yeah, basically, and, and create a you know, seamless transaction. Mm -hmm. People are working really hard on pushing those ideas out and get get the the you know, virtual world and the real world more integrate into one piece. Um, that's what we're aiming at this point, and you know, lots of things unknown in the future that that's gonna come up. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to our channel, follow along for more content, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Let's hatch awesome. <laughs> <laughs>